Woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. And I, I gotta get this mustache off my face, oh my god. It's taking over. It's consuming me! It's time for another segment of Let's Argue, where I get online and I hit you guys up for some unpopular opinions for some hot takes, for some tough questions, and I answer the best ones in, in a video on this channel. S subscribe already, why don't you? Let's see what you guys said this week. Music reviewers ruin the music. Oh. Actually, in reality, the music sounds the fucking same whether someone reviews it or not. So, I don't know, if, if me or some other reviewer makes you change your mind about a song that maybe you previously liked. Maybe you were just listening really lazily to something in a passive fashion because it was popular or because it was on or because it just sounded pleasant in the background and someone actually forced you to think about it and you thought, hey, actually this this doesn't this this don't sound that good. Best song off Yeezus is I'm in it and worst song is bound to not not today, Satan. Not today. today. My Chemical Romance is amazing and gets way too much unnecessary hate. Absolutely true because The Black Parade is easily one of the best rock albums of the 2000s. If you don't think that's true, you're a bitch. Mainstream culture was a byproduct of media monopolization and the expense of marketing and art back in the day. The internet is slowly but surely erasing that and allowing every weird motherfucker to have their exact niche catered to, hence a golden age of art and aesthetic. I love your enthusiasm, but I kind of want to pop your bubble a little bit and, and force you to realize that the rug is kind of being slowly pulled out from under you. While the internet is the Wild West in a lot of ways, our top 40 songs, our top 10 albums, the sounds of these records, the songwriting themes and concepts displayed in these records are more homogenized than ever. There is less diversity at the top in the mainstream than there ever has been before. And partially what is contributing to this is that the new gatekeeper essentially is streaming platforms. Now that labels have totally gone all in on that model, they're making tons of money off that model, more money than they've ever made before, and a great deal of the streams and plays that people engage in on these stream platforms is through playlists, which of course a lot of these major record labels benefit directly off of. So while yes, anybody can upload and put anything onto the internet, a lot of the websites that we have trusted over the years to allow us to do that, YouTube, SoundCloud, have been having a hard, hard time as of late. So I just hope that you guys kind of watch the throne over here, fight for your ability to continue to be creative on the internet, and do not let streaming, as much as I love streaming, and streaming platforms are really convenient, they're really easy, they're great, uh, do not let streaming become the next gatekeepers, because if that happens, it's gonna be like the 80s, it's gonna be like the 90s, it's gonna be like the 70s all over again. We need more artists like Danny Brown who discuss not only the highs, but the very real lows that drugs can have, like Xanax, talking about the real downfalls it can have is a reality that needs to be discussed more. I think really, truly what you're asking here, if we're to go just a little bit more general, is that <laughs> you want more artists who are actually dynamic and multifaceted and display an array of emotions. And uh, musicians, artists, pay attention here because as much as you might think people out there don't wanna hear anything real, or they don't wanna hear an emotional song, or they don't wanna hear a, a personal song, you're absolutely wrong. People like to hear artists, when, when someone is a fan of you, they want to hear every side of you, they want to hear all about you, they're obsessed with you, they want to hear you sort of take on different points of view, different ideas, given that it's, uh, you know, uh, done well. Nobody wants to hear the same person do the same thing forever. You gotta change it up or just eventually you're gonna you're gonna turn irrelevant and then nobody's gonna want to hear you do anything. You can learn to love any song if you listen to it enough. Um, I think I think you may be kind of confusing familiarity 
and the, the ease with which one can commit to memory a song and a song's goodness. Catchiness is certainly a quality of songwriting and a, and a quality that you want to have if you're making pop music, if you're making music that you want to get stuck in people's heads, if you're making music that you want people to remember and just sort of uh, uh, become a part of their lives that they just can't like delete it for whatever reason. However, there are many qualities that go into a good song outside of catchiness. And there are many good songs that, that aren't really particularly catchy. They're longer, they're more patient, they're, uh, I guess, uh, uh, more cerebral. There are tons of shit-ass songs that uh, <laughs> are pretty catchy, or if you listen to them enough times, like, uh, they may be listenable, or uh, they, they may have elements to them that you recall over time, but uh, uh, it's, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just, just not really feeling that that comment. Not every song is lovable. A lot of songs are trash. Yo, 2013 called. It wants its Watsky is the goat tweet back. Come on, man. You, you should you should be listening to Russ by now. It's 2020. New Metal is having a small renaissance, and for some reason you have five spots to fill on the main stage of OzFest. Who's headlining? Hell yes! If we're counting New Metal, and we are also counting Alternative Metal as well, because they, they have a lot of commonalities. I am picking Slipknot. I'm picking System of a Down, I'm picking Corn, but they can only play the first few records. I'm picking, you know, let's let's say Kitty. I'm gonna pick Kitty, uh, and I am going to pick, uh, let's throw an obscurity in there. Let's uh, say American Head Charge. American Head Charge. We're we're, we're gonna go American Head Charge. I, I was I was just so into them when, when I was in high school. I have no idea why. I, I was just really deeply into the into that one album that they came out with. It was so fucking heavy. And if I was gonna expand beyond those bands, I'd probably pick, uh, you know, have have Marilyn Manson play. Uh, Rammstein would play. Probably have them play. Uh, we'd do some Coal Chamber, some Power Man 5000. Uh, we, we'd also have Andrew W.K. come back. He'd, he'd just play I Get Wet all the way through. We gotta have Limp Biscuit play. Nonpoint has gotta play. Uh, who else has gotta play? Uh, P.O.D. P.O.D. has to play. Uh, Saliva. Saliva's gonna play too. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop uh, mentioning like really bad alternative metal and uh, like post-grunge and uh, new metal bands, I'm sorry. Ty Dolla Sign always sounds like he's one day away from getting over a sore throat. His singing skills are overrated. Dude, that, 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 that rusty voice that he has, that, uh, ugh, that kind of gravelly, that, that's, that's part of his appeal. It's part of his, it's part of his appeal. With artists like Taylor Swift and Justin Timberlake tanking hard by chasing a trend years too late, I feel their time in the spotlight is coming to an end and newer pop stars will come and take their place. I mean, we're already kind of seeing that replacement through hip hop dominating in a way that pop currently is not right now, but also simultaneously, Ed Sheeran is fucking killing it. Like, can, can, can we acknowledge that? Ed Sheeran killed 2017 in terms of record sales? Primus was the best band of the 90s. Their first four studio albums are amazing rock slash metal albums and continued to make pretty great music after their drummer left and also made cool music onto the 2010s with their recent albums. I will say and will agree that Primus had an amazing run in the 90s. I mean, one great record after the next. Uh, even Antipop is not really that bad of an album. I would say that's their last decent record. Uh, I think Primus recently, not quite as exciting as they were back in the day, but still few rock bands were as innovative as they were and were consistently fire for as long as they were in that decade. And um, I'm gonna leave it at that. This has been the latest episode of Let's Argue. I, I love you guys so much. Uh, thank you for watching. You are uh, my hero, and over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel, Anthony Fantano. Let's argue forever.